Welcome to episode 94 of Tools in the Hall. After Dark. I have what might be the weirdest gun you've ever seen. I know it ranks right up there with the weirdest ones I've ever seen. Stick around and I'll tell you all about it and show you it. It's kind of cool. First, we're going to start off with some hammers. The first hammer is this eight pound dead blow bash sledgehammer from Wilton. These guys have what I would consider to be the best, if not among the best, sledgehammers on the market. They have these soft faced dead blows, they have hard faced ones, they have all different configurations of head styles and handle lengths. This is the 30 inch handle on the eight pound head. And they have a couple of cool features on these, namely a flat spot on the top here so you can stand this thing up on the ground and not have to bend all the way over to pick it up. Of course, Wilton puts a lifetime warranty on it. And I've sold a lot of different Wilton hammers over the past, never ever have had to handle a warranty claim. They're solidly built. Funny story with this was a customer, my customer came on the truck and said, I need a, I need a, a heavy hammer. And I said, well, do you know what head weight you want? And he goes, oh, around eight pounds. I said, well, what handle length do you want? And he says, around 30 inches. I said, okay. And I thought he said, I'm going to use it to smash rodents. Now, I'm not one to judge outwardly anyway. And I'm like, okay, right, whatever, man, use it for what you want. And I said to him, uh, there won't be a whole lot left. I said, so let's look and see what the what the different options are. And as we're looking it up, he's he's kind of walking back and forth and he's got this quizzical look on his face. But our conversation continues and we're nailing down exactly the configuration of the hammer that he wants. And uh, he said, yeah, I, I, I got to take these rotors off these trash trucks. And I said, I thought you said you're going to smash rodents, not rotors. And he said, I was wondering why you said there wouldn't be much left. So it was a funny misunderstanding and how I heard it. I really enjoyed the visual of watching this guy smash rodents with an eight pounds, with an eight pound sledgehammer. Not that I'm into blood sport, but you know, to each his own. Why do I have a Matco hammer? Because I handle a lot of warranties for brands that I do not carry. If someone does not see a Matco truck or a Snap-on truck or Mac or Cornwell, I will handle warranties on their behalf. So I will take their broken hammer, send it to Matco, and the Matco may or may not send back a replacement hammer. I try to tell people realistically what to expect, and that is Matco bats about 50-50 with me sending stuff in. Sometimes I get it back. Sometimes I don't get it back and then I'll never see it again. So usually people go like, yeah, whatever, it's broken anyway, I don't use it. Well, all right. And I understand that resignation, but what saddens me is that people paid really good money for this stuff. And when we send it to Maco, they really are obligated to send it back, but they're not that great at handling the warranty stuff at the corporate level. The guys on the trucks are a completely different story. You may have good or bad experiences with them, but corporate is not consistent. So when my customer came to me with a broken Mako hammer, I said, okay, I'll send it and, and I'll give you an example. I sent them two hammers once a, a year or so ago and uh, they weren't, well, we, uh, we waited weeks and we finally called them and said, hey, can you give us a status on this? And they said, yeah, those aren't covered under warranty. I said, oh, but they are because it says right on your website that they're covered under warranty when we set up the return authorization. And the guy said, well, we scrapped them, so you can't, you, you can't get them. I'm like, those weren't yours to scrap. And I had to speak to a manager to resolve it. And they resolved it. They sent us two new hammers. But I wondered why did it take that level of effort when there isn't another company that I've ever dealt with which, which has done something like that. It just tells you you're out of luck, denies a warranty claim for something that is, in fact, covered under warranty, and then says that uh, you can't have your stuff back. It was very strange. We got that resolved. That was the only time I had that particular kind of incident with Mako. So I don't want to bash them for it because it may have just been catching the, the wrong guy on the wrong day. But the long and short of it is, I'm still waiting for stuff to come back that I sent them months and months and months ago. So I'm sure it's not a back order issue. I'm sure that it's not that good at tracking and processing warranty orders. That has been my experience. Your mileage may vary, but I tell... I tell my customers if they want me to handle the form, I'm happy to do that, 
but there's going to be a shipping charge regardless of whether or not we ever get anything back because I have to pay to send it to Maco. And people understand that. They're just happy to have me take care of it for them. And in fact, I had a customer a few weeks ago, actually a couple of months ago, give me a broken half-inch Matco ratchet. The handle was broken. And I said, okay, we'll send it in. I don't, you know, I can't promise you a time frame. He goes, whatever. He says, I don't use it anyway. So we send the ratchet in. Well, it took two months to get the ratchet back. And I hand it to him last week. And he said, what's this for? I said, this is your broken Matco ratchet. He says, I don't remember having one. I said, really? I said, back in October, I'm rather August, you gave me the broken one. I sent it in. He goes, I, he says, I honestly don't remember. He says, I since bought a new one, but okay, now I have a second ratchet. So a timely fulfillment of warranties is really necessary. And it's been my experience with Maco that they are not that timely in, hand, in handling these things. But, you know, it's just a just the way it is when dealing with them. Unlike Snap-on, who handles their warranties extremely effectively. This is the long-handled half-wrench Snap-on ratchet. This one was broken here. It had peeled away where clearly somebody was using it for a job it was not intended to be used for. But Snap-on is very good about handling warranties. Even when something's been abused, I have never had an issue with sending things to Snap-on and having them fulfill the order in a timely manner. And if something's on back order, they tell me when I call it in. So I can convey that to my customer and, and, and manage their expectations properly. So I really do enjoy working with Snap-on, not so much with Matco. Mac's not bad, and then Cornwell's terrible. So we may never get stuff back from Cornwell. I wanna say most of the stuff I ever sent them has not come back. And those are the brands that I don't carry myself. Those are the other tool truck brands. So uh, any brand that I carry that I can get through a distributor or through a manufacturer that I work with directly, completely different story. So I do these things on, uh, on, a, on a best effort basis, or I can't promise anything, and I don't, uh, I don't charge anything for my time. I just have to charge uh, a small fee to cover shipping to get stuff back and forth. But just came back from Snap-on this week. That hammer came back from Maco. Those customers will be happy this coming week when I deliver it for them. One of my customers asked me about windshield tools and I was showing him the windshield trim removal tool, but he didn't like them. He said, do you have something that's kind of curved and not made of plastic? And there's a ton of plastic ones. So this is one from Lyle. It's not made specifically for windshield. It's a trim remover, but he said this would work perfectly for working on windshields. So we're getting this one. We can see the curves on either end of this. And it's inexpensive. It's like 23 bucks on the truck. And like all Lyle stuff, these are high quality items, a lifetime warranty on them. They stand behind everything, but my my breakage rate on Lyle tools is really low. I I rarely have to take care of warranties for any of their stuff. I know Milton for air chucks and inflators and air tool fittings. This is a long reach air chuck dual head on it for the dually wheels on large trucks. This end is for the inner wheel and this end is for the outside wheel. So you'll pull back on that stem, on that valve stem to inflate and on the inner wheel you'll push in on that valve stem. And these are nice and long so you don't have to get down that low and you can work it in if you have to come in at an angle because sometimes the valve stems are a little straighter than they like to be. It'd be great if the valve stems came out a little bit. Sometimes they're not that flexible so you have to kind of get it in there. These are the ones I normally carry for some reason I was out of them I forgot to restock on them or something and I had a customer asking me about them so this one goes to a customer and I've got another one that goes back in inventory. I had a customer ask me about an air hammer and normally I would recommend the Ingersoll. Aircat also has excellent ones and K-Tool now has one. I don't know who manufactures it for K-Tool and I mean I am interested but I don't know the quality of it so I don't normally recommend that. So the one I do recommend are the Ingersoll ones, and Ingersoll has had for many years their 119 Max air hammer, which was their standard in the industry, great hammer. 
But Matco and Snap-on both had one that was stronger. And people who work on heavy trucks prefer the stronger hammers. Well, Ingersoll came out with their 135 Max air hammer. This guy is 15% stronger than their standard air hammer. This is the kit that comes with five chisel bits. The chisels are not coming under, under a warranty, but the air hammer has a two-year warranty. So it's nice to have more than the one-year standard warranty you see on a lot of other air hammers in the industry. And this one costs over $100 less than the Snap-on one does. So I like the pricing on it. And when my customer said to me, I need an air hammer, I said, would you like the, and he goes, yes. Because I think he knew I was gonna say, you know, the heavy duty strong one, or do you want the standard duty, you know, one that's not as strong. And he knows exactly what he needs this for because he works on trash trucks. So he's gonna be working on stuff that requires the strongest air hammer he can get his hands on. And I wholeheartedly recommend this one because I have sold this a few times in the past since they came out with it and everyone raves about it. So I like the fact that it competes very well with the Mako and Snap-on offerings. Here's a cool offering from Astro. They have a 10 piece snap ring plier set. And you can compare this to the larger set, the 16 piece set from Lang and I have one from K-Tool that are made in the USA. This is made in China, so it is less expensive, but it's significantly less expensive. This one only costs $54.99 as opposed to the $160 one that, that Lang uh, costs. Now, people are happy to buy the Lang one. I have only really ever sold the Lang and the K-Tool ones. I have not sold the Astro one before, but somebody specifically asked for it. They saw it in the flyer. They liked the price. They asked me to get it for them and it has both straight and bent tipped snap ring pliers of varying sizes and we'll see how it performs for him. I always like when people buy stuff that I don't have experience with because I rely on that feedback to know A, is it worth carrying on the regular? B, is it worth recommending if I don't carry it? And if not, what should I carry instead? So I've always had good luck with Lang and K-Tool We'll wait to see how this one from Astro pans out. But if it's anything like everything else that Astro makes, I'm very, very optimistic because I have never known anyone to be let down by an Astro tool. And their stuff is always reliable, solid. It's priced really well. But there's a lot of people who don't like the fact that this stuff is made in China. Fair enough. Uh, if there's a US made alternative, like I said, you wanna spend $100 more to get a 16 piece set made in the USA, you're welcome to, and I'm happy to sell it to you. Uh, it's really just a matter of choice, and I like being able to offer that choice to people. There's been some interesting comments on some of my previous videos about stuff made in the USA, and some people seem to have, um, you know, some something really getting under their skin about, about some of the brands that aren't made in the US, and they don't really know why. If if people don't understand by now in this day and age that we are living in a global economy and where companies can make a quality product for less, they will do that. And if it's not good quality, then you can choose where you buy your stuff or who you buy it from. And, um, you know, I, 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 I can't bash companies who don't manufacture in the U.S. I understand it. And, uh, you know, as long as they can come up with good products, good prices, and they're going to stand behind it. Sure, why not? Would I prefer that companies manufacture in the US? Yeah, but it's not realistic. I mean, no country limits their, their manufacturing to everything within the country. We have been exporting and importing products for centuries, if not millennia. So it's something that has always been a thing. No one's ever going to be able to make everything within the borders of their own country. So I would just recommend that you get over that and move on and go instead for value, go for quality versus cost, and look at what you're getting, and then you can make a more informed decision. Because guess what? People can make crappy products in the US too. So it's not a guarantee, and you don't always get junk from China. There's some very good, high quality products that come out of China. Milwaukee, for example, manufactures in China, and they have the best power tools on the market quality, price, and warranty-wise. So 
it's kind of tough to argue that. So I don't like to engage in the argument because I think it's a silly one. Uh, buy what you like, buy from whomever you want, but it's not always easy to know the country of manufacture on these things. And if you did, there is not always a made in America alternative. This is an M18 reciprocating saw from Milwaukee. It's their Sawzall brand reciprocating saw. The tool carries a five year warranty as most of their tools do. And the customer who was getting this had a choice. He was buying the two piece half inch and three inch impact kit that comes with two batteries and a charger and a bag. And Milwaukee currently has a special. You buy that kit, you can choose a free battery, a free saw, or a free drill. He chose the free saw, so this is what he's getting. He already got the two-piece kit. When they have uh, freebies like this, they ship them separately, so sometimes I have to wait some additional time to get a freebie in. So he'll be stoked to get that this week. This just came back from Milwaukee's repair department. This is their half-inch M18 Impact. This went in with a problem of being intermittent. Customer puts a good battery on it, pulls a trigger and it works. Keeps pulling the trigger, doesn't work. So we send it to them and they just replace it with a brand new one uh, as, as is typical for Milwaukee. They're very good about that. Most of the time, I think we get replacement tools. We don't necessarily get repaired tools. And that makes a lot of sense from business perspective because you can minimize the amount of money you have to pay technicians and the amount of parts you have to keep in inventory. If all you're doing is swapping out a tool, uh, you save all those costs. And for the cost of Milwaukee to have one of these tools manufactured, I'm sure it probably costs them less in the long run. Every now and then, if it's a simple fix, they'll just replace parts and then send us to the repaired unit. But this one, they're replacing the whole thing. Gear wrench has my go-to torque wrenches. Precision Instruments also makes outstanding torque wrenches. I have other brands available to me. K-Tool, AC Delco, Sonex, and maybe one or two others. I don't normally recommend those because I'm not familiar with them. They may be perfectly good quality, but I just don't know them. So between Gear Wrench and Precision Instruments, I've had nothing but excellent results with their products. So they're the ones that I go to. I have a customer ask me to get them a quarter inch click type torque wrench and this is the one that he's getting from Gear Wrench. They changed their packaging a few years ago and I'm glad they did. Their cases are nicer, their packaging's better, more attractive. This one goes from 30 to 200 inch pounds. The pricing on these is rather good which is another reason why I prefer their stuff. But also Precision Instruments pricing has been rather good lately. And I'm a fan of either brand. I have sold both with equally good results, but um, I don't think Precision Instruments makes digital torque wrenches and Gear wrench does not make split beam. So if someone has a preference between those two, then there's a brand for them. And Precision Instruments is made in the US. These are made overseas. And you know, the price on this one's $269.99. Good price for a well-made torque wrench with a one year warranty. Calvian Tools has a lot of cool specialty tools. They have a back probe kit that comes with an array of back probes and test leads. I had a customer ask me for something like this specifically. There's a few different configurations of this kit, not just from Calvan, but from other brands. This is the one he settled on. And for the $34 price tag, he's happy to get it because it'll make his job so much easier. How he's lived this long without one, I don't know, but he's gonna get one this week along with that giant 30 inch long hammer. Perhaps one of the more popular wrench sets I've ever have the pleasure of carrying is this double-ended ratcheting box end set from K-Tool. I can't take this out of the package because this is going to a customer. They have five different wrenches in the, in the set, uh, different sizes on each end. They're flex head, ratcheting box ends, and it has an eight and 10, a 12 and a 14, 13 and 15, 16 and 18, and a 17 
and a 19. There is no 11 millimeter. So I think it's interesting that they chose those sizes. Also note that there is a standard sized set of these same wrenches, but I think maybe in all the years I've been selling them, I've sold one of those. Everybody gravitates toward this metric set. It's got beautiful long handles, and the best part about it is, I don't know if you can see it in the packaging here, but there's an offset to the head that sets this apart. Yeah, you can see it there, I think. That sets it apart from other wrenches. It gives you a little bit extra clearance, and you don't have to flex the head if you don't want, if that gives you enough clearance to get over something. It's very popular. People don't like the versions of these wrenches that don't have an offset. Lifetime warranty on them, and like the smaller sizes always break. The 8 and 10 always breaks. Uh, the 1315 always breaks because they're so commonly used and people put, you know, more leverage than they should on these perhaps and they usually break the pin on the flex head, but it's all covered and I had to swap them out for new ones. This strangely expensive and simple truck brake tool from Lyle is going to a customer of mine who works on trash trucks. There's a configuration that he needs in the end of this uh, for the notches are located. There's a Another pair of these that's yellow that has a different notch configuration. So the red ones are the ones he was asking for specifically. And yeah, these are a lot of money for what they are. But when they're exactly what you need, like any specialty tool, I mean, how many other things can you use these for? So specialty tools are always more expensive. And remember, tool truck pricing is more expensive than any other buying option you have. So I am not at all ashamed to say that these cost $96. But, you know, uh, he's... He's a kind of mechanic who understands the cost of doing business on a tool truck, and he's good with it. So he's going to get this one next week. There was a time not long ago when you could get an 11-inch long set of long reach diagonal cutters from lots of different companies. Irwin was my go-to for that. But the only two I know of that exist still are Snap-on and this one from Titan. I haven't seen them under any other brand. And it's a bummer because I really like the Irwin ones. I used to sell them uh, quite frequently, but now I have to stock the Titan ones, which isn't bad. I mean, they're still perfectly good quality. Never had any issues with them. Uh, but it's just, I, I don't like not having options, I guess is really what it comes down to because I can't offer the options then to my customers. So when someone says, you have long reach dikes, I say, well, yeah, these. And they're fine with it, but lifetime warranty from most every hand tool from Titan. These are good, high quality cutters. And they're going to a customer. Yeah, they're going to a customer. They're not going in inventory. They're going to a customer this week. One of the more popular inspection lights I have are these micro stream lights from Streamlight. Blue, red, br coyote brown, and they also have black. I know I got a black one around here somewhere. I just haven't seen it. And they're awesome little lights. Fairly bright for the size. The top off at 250 lumens. They are rechargeable. They have a clip on them that you can use for your pocket or the brim of your ball cap and they come with a lanyard and a charging cord. I love these little guys. They're such a terrific option if you don't need a ton of light and they're doing some up close inspection work. They put a lifetime warranty on them like most of their other products. I'm a big fan of Streamlight for a lot of reasons but you have heard me say many, many, many times how for a lot of products I prefer the Coast brand lighting and it's true. So when Sna when Streamlight has a product like this that Coast does not have, I'll go with the Streamlight ones. And I don't know that Coast has one quite like this. So it's the Streamlight ones that I go with all the time. I never had to take care of one of these under warranty. They're, they're super reliable and they're just an all around great little light. Terrific for gifts too. So, you know, when you're looking to put some stocking stuffers in people's stockings this Christmas, consider something like this. Streamlight also has these pocket mate lights, which is these little square aluminum body lights that are also terrific gift ideas. So you can't go wrong because everybody needs a good light. And especially when you have something like this, easy to keep with you all the time. So it's part of your everyday carry setup. If you need a good composite body, right angle die grinder, Ingersoll has a great option. These are a little pricey at full price, but I bought this as part of a bundle deal with some other things, so I can afford to sell this for less than the list price to make it much more attractive. So 
when I can knock a bunch of money off the price, I'm happy to do it because these are such high quality die grinders. I do normally sell the uh, the Onyx one from Astro until I think they discontinued what was my favorite best selling angle die grinder. It was this quick lock one that had a, a, a headlock feature on the back here. You just press the button and you only needed one wrench then to open up the collet. This one you need two wrenches for the collet, one up here and one right there down in the shaft that you use to loosen and tighten the collet. Uh, Aircat also has an excellent one. It's a little larger than this. I think that one's a half horsepower. This one I believe is a one third horsepower. So it's nice and strong. The body's gonna stay uh, nice and warm uh, because what happens when you use an air tool is compressed air cools things. So the bodies on these can get very cold when you're using them and it's no fun to do that in the winter. So with the composite body, it's gonna be warmer. Use these at 90 PSI only. I know a lot of people bump up the shop air because it has to serve as a bunch of lines at once. I recommend putting a regulator on the back end of this tool in between the line and the fitting. They have inexpensive brass ones that you can use just to dial in your PSI. I recommend stuff like that for these tools. If you put too, if you put too high a pressure through these, you can damage the tool. I have seen it happen on some other die grinders where the back portion of here blows out. So manage your airflow and pressure accordingly and you'll get many, many years of use out of this guy. I always feel a little antsy if I don't have one of these on the truck and I've been without these for a little while until I place my reorder. This is the five piece locking pliers set from Milwaukee. These compete favorably with the Vice Grip brand from Irwin. These have a torque lock feature on the back there. That's that red thumb turn with a hole in it that you can put a screwdriver shank into to torque it around so that you get a little more gripping power out of it. And it has five of the most commonly used sizes and jaw configurations. Lifetime warranty on these are built a little beefier than the Irwin ones are and they cost a little bit less. So these are the guys that I go to to put them on the truck. This one's going back in stock. And now it's time for Tool Hall After Dark. A colleague of mine says, uh, I know you like Smith & Wesson guns and yeah, I do. Uh, not much more than any other brand, but I like Smith & Wesson. And he, he brought in something for me to see and he wants me to give it the once over, cite it in for him and, and, and check it out. And I will admit that it has a novelty value that I think is really cool. From Smith & Wesson, it's their FPC rifle. <laughs> the charging handle acts as a release for the folding barrel. <laughs> the stock stores two magazines and you can use any Smith & Wesson 9mm M&P magazine for this gun. So it's chambered a 9mm and you can use any of their magazines which makes it very handy especially if you already own some and the two magazines are locked into the stock with a latch right here. So you just push that latch, they can pull the magazine out. The charging handle here, when you pull it back, it opens the bolt and then you hold the bolt open with the, with the bolt catch either here or there's one on the other side that I just activated to hold it open. Load your magazine. Close your bolt and you are ready to go. Has an M-lock handguard, a Picatinny rail. He's mounted a cool red green optic on it. So I'm gonna psych this in for him. He said, no, oh, you can take it to the range and shoot it to him. I'm like, nah, no, I don't know. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. And uh, it, it's, it's small, compact, convenient. It's not a lightweight gun though by any stretch. This is a hefty little guy. But I really like the uniqueness of it. I like how it's easy to throw in a backpack or a bag. So you can take it with you when you go to the range or if you're going camping and you want to do some farting around and, and do some target shooting, you can do that. I don't really know of any other practical application for something like this. Maybe you have one in mind for when you need a folding 
rifle, not just a folding stock, but the whole thing. To release the barrel, there's a there's a release latch here. You just push that up and then you can fold the barrel back and then lock it in with the charging handle, which has a notch on one side, which hooks into one of the M lock holes on on the handguard. Pretty funky, but pretty cool because it is unique. I love stuff like this. And it's really cool to be able to really give it a once over, look at all the details. I'll give it a, a cleaning for him, sight it in, and give it back to him with, uh, with my opinions on it. So far, I like what I see. It's built very solidly. I doubt you'll have any problems with the build quality on this one. How well it feeds and shoots, I don't know. But I just thought it was really neat to show you something that you may not have seen before. Or if you own one or have shot one, say so in the comments. I'd love to hear what your experiences have been with this because I don't know how widespread it is. I don't know how big the market is for this. It is a new product from, from Smith & Wesson, so I don't know yet what sales have been like. It'll be fun to see if you have had any experience with these. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and keep watching the channel because I'm gonna have a flyer drop video. I'm gonna have ear tool repair videos. And of course, more tools in the haul videos are coming down the line. So do me a favor, click down here now to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool, don't be one.